so far in our lessons, we have learned how to draw things on the screen, how to put sprites on the screen, and then we did learn how to use random numbers to make a little bit of movement on the screen with the draw loop. In lesson 12, we're going to learn about purposeful movement um, to make sprites move on the screen. So we're going to use something called the counter pattern. And the counter pattern is one of the most common used patterns in all of computer programming. So the counter pattern, um, looks like this. Um, with the counter pattern, we are going to look at a value, so a variable, and we're going to add one to it. That's the counter pattern. X equals X plus one. That X can be any value or any variable. So it could be Y equals Y plus one. It can also be other numbers than one, including negative numbers. It's just that you are going to move by a specific amount over and over again. So we can see in this example here, um, this isn't running, but you can see this example in uh, code.org. The hippo and the rabbit and the pig are moving. So the hippo is going to move on the X. So I want you to remember the X is left to right. So the hippo would move positively, which is to the right, by two pixels each time. It would also move down the Y by two. So when you do a movement of X and Y, it's down and to the right, which is diagonal. The rabbit is just going to move down the screen because it's on the Y. Moving down on the Y is positive. And the pig is going to move to the right on the X because that is left to right and positive would have them moving right. So there's a lot of different uses for the counter pattern, but let's look at some examples of the counter pattern. And I'm going to work you through a couple of these to help you understand how it works. I am going to play with these planes for you. Um, you need to make sure you're making it look like it does on the screen, but I want to show you a couple of things. So right now, this jet is going up the screen. It is on the Y axis, so jet dot Y, that's the property we're changing, and we're subtracting three. So if you watch my mouse, I want you to look down here underneath the grid while I am moving my mouse. So watch the Y value. Ignore the X and just watch the Y. You can see as I move my mouse up the screen, the Y value gets smaller, which means I'm subtracting from it. If I want the jet to go the other way, so down the screen, I would have to add to it. So instead of minus three, I would be adding three. So I would say jet dot Y equals jet dot Y plus two or three, whatever number you would like. The bigger the number, the faster it's going to move. So there, it goes down the screen. Now we can get this guy moving left to right. Let's make him move right first. Um, I'm gonna put this one back the way it was. Watch my mouse and watch below here on the show grid. Let me switch this in just a hair. There we go. Watch my mouse as I move my mouse across the right screen look under show grid. You will notice the X is getting bigger if I go to the right. And if I go to the left, the number gets smaller. So to make the plane move across the screen, it's called a plane. I'm going to use that counter pattern to get that counter pattern. We're just going to go grab this variable and I'm going to say plane dot x equals plane dot x plus I'm going to make this one move faster. I'm going to do five. 
probably going to run into the other one. Boom! Crash. If you want to make it look exactly like the sample image, you're going to do two again, just like they did. And it will move a little bit slower, and then it will smash into the other plane. If I wanted the plane to move the other way, I'm going to start the plane over. Instead of 50, I'm going to start it at 350. And yes, it's going to fly backwards, but whatever I want you to see flying the other way. So in this instance, I'm going to be going left on the X, which makes that value get smaller, so I subtract from it. So I'm going to pull out another x and say plane.x minus 3. And now the plane is flying backwards. So this is the point in our lessons where things start to get a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to ask that you do complete all three of the practices on this one. It's very important that you understand all of these concepts. And then when you get to the challenge, uh, you can choose one of the two or the free play if you would like.